Hi, this is my first keyboard build. If you're thinking of having a go and want an idea of what you might get from your first build, I hope this is of use. I'm going to run through the parts and their costs and then a quick assembly. So my approximate costs are, for the cheapest key switches that I could find, and I wanted linear ones, I found 110 for £18. Of these, I'll be using 70. The rest were used on macro pads and things. The body is 3D printed. I used the Redox Handwire model from MattDB, uh, which is on Thingiverse. I've linked it below. I saw it on the Zach Friedman video, and it's a really nice model. I used an Aurora Green filament, which was about £20 for 750 grams. All the parts printed first go, so I used less than 300 grams of filament. The keycaps. I did have a look at printing them. FDM prints are a bit rough for regular use, but it does make them pennies to print. And I could go over these with some wet and dry to smooth them out. The reviews told me that cheap keycap would lose their print, so I went for ones printed on the front in the hope that they will last longer. These ones cost about £28 for 109 keys. Microcontroller. I use the relatively new Pi Pico. If you can get one, they're a little less than £4. Diodes, so that you can press multiple keys at once. These were £4 for 250, of which I'll be using about 70. A nice build would have fancy cables uh, with plugs and sockets. I just used some old wire that I had knocking about, and I sheathed the cables with paracord. I've got about 30 meters of assorted patterns for £7. Bolts are M3. I prefer a socket cap head, maybe coloured ones in the future but I had these left over from another project. This puts a total cost somewhere around £45 if you're being generous in the calculation, i.e. only costing the 70 diodes and switches and keycaps that I used. I'm happy to do this as I've used the spare bits for macro pads. This was the first one, hand wired, looks very pretty in a 3D printed shell, but, but it actually wasn't great to use as I'd forget what key did what. The second one looks much less pretty with a naked PCB, but it can switch between several different modes for different software, and it gives some feedback for mode and button presses, etc. So purple is Teams with mute and unmute, camera, etc. Blue is Word with Unicode shortcuts. As always, the next iteration will improve, and I might do a video on that. So the keyboard. A thing I saw on several build videos was the benefit of lubricating the switches. I don't think it translates well to the video, but for these switches, it made a huge difference. There was often a slight crunchy scratchiness to them originally. I tried a couple of silicon lubricants and for these, the thicker one felt best to me. It took maybe a couple of minutes per switch, so possibly this is the slowest step of the build. Pop them open gently and add lubricant to any areas where the plastic moves against plastic. And then I added a blob onto the spring as well for good measure. So if I crank the gain on the volume up to 11, that scratchy noise is two kids scribbling crayons a couple of metres or so away. There is some noise at arm's length, but it's not enough to trouble me. While I was doing this, I was also printing the case. I used uh, an Ender 3. I quickly test the key switches still worked and that I hadn't insulated everything inside with excess silicon, and then insert all the switches. Then wiring up. I followed the instructions from the QMK hand wiring guide. I'm not sure I've done my rows and columns the best way, but it's certainly functional. Loop the diodes and check the polarity first. Then bend the legs and solder the rows. I used a bit of spring in the metal to hold each one close to the next. The aim is to have one on a switch pin, then 90 degrees to its neighbor after the diode. So this is kind of zooming in for context. Then trim some wire and solder the columns. I tried a few different things, but for me the best so far was using bell wire. Cut the approximate length, then remove all the insulation. Then trim that insulation to the size you need and re-thread it back on the wire. When it's a short bit, it threads on quite easy. I found that weaving the column wires either side of the switch pins held them in place until soldered. So the one on the left is soldered and the one on the right is just held in by the little bit of spring on the wire as it's woven between the pins. Next, add longer stranded wires to connect the rows and columns to the Pico. If you've got them, use colored wires here and it'll save you a few checks with the multimeter. A nice build might use two controllers or socket on the cable. So this needs some strain relief on the cable ties. I don't think it made any difference, but I had some foam underlay from doing a floor that I thought might reduce the thump of a key strike a little. So I lined the base of the case. Now a quick test. There are a few 
Pico Keyboard Project's knocking about, but it's all fairly new, so any information I give here will be out of date. I wrote a quick MicroPython script which tells me the row and column for any given key so that I can check everything solid correctly here. I've got rubber feet on order, but it's about done. Compared to a kit or PCB, it's not bad and I'm happy for now. A future project I think needs a matching trackball or something, and I also think keyboards should have inbuilt USB hubs and memory card readers, but that might have to be another keyboard. I'll see how this one fares. Thanks for watching, see you next time.